Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to a special report on reducing debt and in particular New Zealand's need to reduce its national debt. When I say national debt, this is not government debt, this is private debt, the debt we all have which we've used to pump into the housing market. This piece is all about the 12 steps to break our addiction to foreign debt. I want to run through the 12 steps I see that New Zealand will go through in the next couple of years to reduce our dependence on foreign debt for the way we live because we're spending more than we earn. We're already halfway through that, those 12 steps, which is a good sign, but the other six steps are quite painful. Starting with the first step, which was the global credit crunch, and that started in June last year when we started to see subprime mortgages in the States go belly up and that started to trigger a ripple effect through the US financial system and then out beyond to the rest of the global financial system. Back to New Zealand, step two was the collapse of finance companies in New Zealand, which really got going in earnest in mid to late 2007 with the collapse of Bridge Corp and Capital and Merchant. It sped up through this year with the collapse and the troubles at Hanover Strategic St. Lawrence, Dorchester and Dominion and is still continuing on with today, Strategic saying its rescue plan has been terminated. Step three was house prices started to fall in New Zealand. They really started to fall in February, March. They're now down around about 6%, depending on how you measure it. We at interest.co.nz think they'll fall 30% before we're out of this. Step four was a tightening of credit standards by the main banks. And we've seen that already with ASB's sovereign division pulling back on 80% plus home loans and low dock lending. And pretty much now the banks are saying you can't get a loan for more than 80%, which is obviously different from the last three or four years where 90% plus loans were the norm. The next step is a financial crisis overseas. And we've certainly seen that in the last three or four weeks as banks galore have gone bust. The governments in Europe and the States have intervened heavily to buy into banks, to pump money into the system, to uh, and to cut interest rates. The next step are deposit guarantees and we've seen that ourselves here in New Zealand in the last week on Sunday where New Zealand um, offered a deposit guarantee for all deposits and banks, finance companies, credit unions and building societies and we've seen that across the world, Europe, the United States and even in Australia where deposit guarantees have either been imposed or increased in terms of deposit insurance. The next step, and this is the crucial one, we haven't gone through yet, although we have actually in the last three to four weeks seen this, the end of short-term foreign borrowing by our banks. Got to remember that over the last two and a half years, our banks on our behalf have borrowed about $50 billion from international investors and then passed it through to us and we pumped it into the housing market. That has to stop. That's about $1.5 billion a month, which we cannot rely on anymore from those foreign investors. Those markets have frozen. They froze about three weeks ago with the collapse of Lehman Brothers. They are still frozen. When they unfreeze and they're starting to thaw a little bit, the price will be very high and we won't be able to get more money easily. We may well be able to roll stuff over, but getting new money cheaply, that is gone. We may then see the New Zealand banks and the Reserve Bank work closely together to make sure that they are continuing to lend in some form. There's the potential for them to uh, essentially swap reserve bank cash for um, residential mortgage-backed securities that the banks have so that they continue to, to keep lending. But significant new lending from these banks, this is the next step, will stop. Because they, the banks will simply not be able to continue the sort of equity withdrawal lending, increasing of credit card limits, um, easy ability to get overdraft money through your, through your mortgage, that will all stop. Some of the heavy lending that's going into the rural sector right now, it's still growing at 20% plus a year, that will have to stop. We will then see heavy credit rationing. So even though interest rates might be low, advertised, although I'd have to say most of that marketing will stop, it will be very difficult to get a home loan. We're looking at loan to value ratios of 50% or even lower. You'll have to be an extremely good credit risk to get a new mortgage. We may see credit ratings downgrades for some of the banks, although this is irrelevant for most people because of the deposit guarantees from the governments. And there is the potential, if things go very pear-shaped, 
where our government or the Australian government may have to step in and nationalise or part nationalise one or more of our banks. By then, and we're probably talking mid-2009, we will see a collapse in house prices. We will see rising unemployment and an extended recession. You remember, New Zealand's already been in recession for all of 2008. We think that will extend through 2009. We'll see an end of discretionary spending. We have to reduce our spending by about $1.5 billion a month. So, holidays, cars, consumer electronics, things we don't really need, we'll have to stop buying. And certainly we'll see the end of leveraged property buying. The era of the individual property investor is over. By 2010, we may start to be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. An economic recovery may start to push through, particularly because a likely collapse in the New Zealand dollar and better export returns from a recovering global economy will start to flow through to our economy. Foreign borrowing may then resume in a very limited way. But New Zealanders have to realise, to get through this 12-step programme, we have to reduce our spending significantly. We have been spending beyond our means, particularly for the last four to five years, and a lot beyond our means. Nearly $100 billion in extra debt. Simply to keep paying off that debt, we're going to have to reduce our spending heavily. I'm Bernard Hickey with a special report on the 12-step programme to deleveraging New Zealand.